Now you see here next we will discuss about the ADH or vasopressin analogs which are used in the treatment of various clinical disorders. You take one of the vasopressin analog that is desmopressin. Remember desmopressin is the drug which is given in patients with the central diabetes sensibilis. Right, it is given in patients with the central diabetes sensibilis. Now the point is why are we using desmopressin in the treatment of central diabetes sensibilis? Why not vasopressin as such? What we are using is we are using the vasopressin analog in the treatment of central diabetes sensibilis. We are not using the vasopressin. Why? Because you take this vasopressin. Vasopressin, it is having a non-selective action. Right, it is having a non-selective action. That means it is acting on both V1, V2 and as well as V3 receptors. The other disadvantage of vasopressin is it is having a short duration of action. Right, it is having a short duration of action. So, in order to avoid this, we use this particular desmopressin. Desmopressin, it is having select V2 receptor activity right it is having selective V2 receptor activity and the other point is it is having a longer duration of action right it is having a longer duration of action so that is the reason why we use a vasopressin analog which is desmopressin but not the vasopressin and this particular desmopressin this can be given orally and this can be given even intranasally. Right, this can be given orally and as well as intranasally. Now, so you take this particular desmopressin. Desmopressin is also the drug of choice for nocturnal diuresis. Right, it is a drug of choice for nocturnal diuresis in case of children. And so in those children where they have the habit of bedwetting, if you give this particular desmopressin, the nocturnal diuresis or nocturnal enuresis will be reduced. Right, and we use this particular desmopressin intranasally also. But the point you need to remember is intranasal desmopressin is not used now, because of risk of a dilutional hyponatremia. Right? Intranasal desmopressin will cause a risk of a dilutional hyponatremia. And so that is the reason why we are not using this particular intranasal desmopressin. The other disadvantage is whenever you are giving this particular desmopressin intranasally, these individuals they are more prone to develop rhinitis right these individuals they are more prone to develop rhinitis so that is the reason why we are not giving this particular intranasal desmopressin right and as we have discussed previously also the another v2 receptor activity it is by of your desmopressin is this desmopressin it is also used for stopping the bleeding in patients with hemophilia and as well as von Willebrand disease. Right, used in the treatment of hemophilia and as well as von Willebrand disease. And how does it do? It acts by releasing the factor 8 and as well as von Willebrand factor from the endothelium. Alright, so this is the desmopressin which is a vasopressin analog which is having a selective V2 receptor activity. As you take the other ADH analog that is terlipressin. So if you take this terlipressin 
the main action is on the V1 receptors. So by acting on the V1 receptors, this terlipresin, it is used in the treatment of hematemesis caused by a esophageal varices. Caused by esophageal varices. Alright. Next, we have another ADH analog that is called lipresin. The important point about lipresin, remember, L for lipresin, L for long acting. Right, L for long acting, right? And lipresin, it is having a longer duration of action, but the action of this particular drug is non-specific. Right, the action of this drug is non-specific. That is, it acts on both V1 and as well as V2 receptors. Right, it acts on both V1 and as well as V2 receptors. All right. Now, but you take this particular terlipresin. Remember, terlipresin, it is a prodrug of vasopressin. Right, terlipresin, it is a prodrug of your vasopressin. All right. Next, we have another ADH analog that is called as felipressin. Right, that is called as felipressin. Remember, this particular felipressin, it can also be used along with the local anesthetic. Right, it can also be used along with the local anesthetic. Now, what is the advantage? Now, remember, whenever we are giving any particular local anesthetic drug, most of the times, along with this local anesthetic, we use adrenaline. Right, we use adrenaline. Now, what is the advantage of using this particular adrenaline? This adrenaline will cause cutaneous vasoconstriction and thereby, there will be no systemic reabsorption of this local anesthetic. Alright, so whenever we are giving adrenaline, adrenaline will cause a local, a cutaneous vasoconstriction and thereby there is no systemic reabsorption of this local anesthetic. Similarly, you take this felipressin. Felipressin is also used along with local anesthetic to prolong their duration of action. Right? To prolong the duration of action. So, these are some of your vasopressin analogs like desmopressin used in the treatment of central diabetes insipidus, von Willebrand disease and hemophilia and terlipressin which is a prodrug of vasopressin used in the treatment of esophageal varices and lipressin which is a long acting drug. It is having a non-selective action that is it is acting on both V1 and as well as V2 receptors. And you take the felipressin, it is used along with the local anesthetic to prolong the duration of action. And let me tell you some of the adverse effects and contraindications of these particular drugs. Now, you take this desmopressin. Desmopressin, whenever you are giving intranasally, right, desmopressin, whenever you are giving intranasally, this drug will cause a nasal irritation right this drug will cause nasal irritation and not only nasal irritation it will also cause rhinitis right it will also cause rhinitis now this particular the vasopressin or your arginine vasopressin one of the adverse effect is whenever we are giving this desmopressin intranasally, it will cause nasal irritation and rhinitis. The other important point is this arginine vasopressin, right, which is nothing but your vasopressin. What it will do to the blood pressure of the individual, it will increase the blood pressure of the individual by causing vasoconstriction. So remember, it can cause hypertension and precipitate angina in patients with the coronary artery disease, right? In patients with the coronary artery disease, this vasopressin, they will precipitate the angina. Whereas, 
in patients already who is hypertensive these drugs will further increase the blood pressure so that is the reason why in patients who are hypertensive in patients whoever are having this ischemic heart disease these drugs should be contraindicated